All power to the people. Um, it's an honor to have to be here and to be able to engage with you around some of the historical relevance of the artwork and some of the more recent work I've also have done. Um, first, I'm going to start off in the presentation. We'll start off with the. Uh, I will probably show some of the uh, materials that were used historically in the Black Panther Party in our initial stages of development and creating the uh, production aspect of the paper. I will also show you uh, work retrospective from the 1960s, 1970s, and more recent work that I've done as well, and talk, show you and talk about some of the travels as well, the, where the uh, journey has taken me over the, the years. Um, nothing has I promoted. It's just been something that uh, people have been inspired by uh, because I'm assuming that because of the context of what the art comes out of, social movements, therefore being a very, having a, a, a social movement that had a great impact uh, in the context of uh, a broader movement, and therefore the art itself uh, played a part in that as well. If we can start off, I wanted to start off showing the uh, we used to use the format was a, a product that you prefabricate a product where you can make your fonts, your type, your letters up with the inside the book. We use this one because it was the cheapest. Their materials cost you maybe a sheet for a dollar fifty a sheet, or the others maybe cost you two fifty or three fifty. But this was a, a more sturdier stuff as well. But this is just the cover. Next, please. Here's show you, uh, is there a cursor that I can use? I'm, unfortunately, I didn't ask for one, but do you have one? Okay. Here, here is a um, uh, page that inside that shows you different fonts. And then if you go to that number on the side of the, the fonts, you go to that page, and then you can see the alphabets themselves. Next, please. Here's what I was talking about. You go and it gave you different font sizes. You had to buy them in font sizes like those. Uh, this is, you know, this tells you to, title, Helvetica round, Helvetica shadow, or whatever ones that you chose to use. Next, please. Then you would buy, then had a code. And the code, maybe not on that page, may have been number 5816 for this particular font. And so you buy it in a sheet like this. And when you buy it in a sheet like this, it's adhesive on the back. It's a clear sheet, almost like silk screened, onto another piece of uh, paper behind it, and you can cut them out, and it, in the line underneath, you can make a, then you can make a re, re pro blue line, which was non-photographic, to line up your, your letters that you chose to use to make up your words. And as you see, these are some sheets I had when I went to City College. <laughs> and also when I worked for the Black Press for over 40 years, they were still using it in the Black Press in the Bay Area. Uh, next, please. Here it shows you inside the different texts and patterns that you could also choose from to get sheets of. And I used to use those, integrate those into the, uh, the black and white line drawings I would do to give depth and texture to the, uh, to the graphics, which you will see in some of that and some of the images. And you just call the code out or whatever it is, and they, then they'll bring up, then you could, they'll go in there and give you that, that sheet. Next, please. Here's the actual sheet of one of a brick. Next, please. Here's where I was talking about making up the letters. Yeah, I just took the word piece, and as I lined them up, you cut out the letters, you line them up, and you have your blue line already up there, so you have that as your guide to go across to make up your words from the sheet. So this is the way you used to wake up the headline, some of the headlines, and the other letters uh, type that we did in the early days of the Black Panther Party. Next, please. Here's showing you some of the community graphic design I used to do uh, for people in the community that I used to know uh, back then uh, and in the 80s. Uh, and this was a friend of mine who used to sell at the flea market. And these are products. She used to give me all of her products, the, the pants, the, the cologne bottles, and all those. And I had to sketch them uh, and make up the whole design 
the letters done the same way as I just showed you with the word peace, cut, clip them, those kinds of things. Uh, sometimes you could get the word uh, fonts typeset on the text, but then I had to cut and paste it in, in position, those kinds of things. So um, this is how it, the things how I used to do when I used to do community graphics. Next, please. Here is a, it was a brother who was an African brother who wanted to do honor this guy. I think his name, I forgot his name. He was from West Africa, palm wine liquor. He wanted me to do the design of the album cover. Same thing, cutting and pasting. He just gave me the elements, the photographs, and the name, and the theme, and then I was able to had to design it and put it together uh, myself. Next, please. Here's for a friend of mine who had a beauty shop. And so she, uh, using the cutout stuff, and hold, you just have to be able, to, then you have to be able to calculate and visualize how it's going to come out when you put it together. And uh, this was for an, uh, like a uh, promotion for her uh, thing. And I had to do the sketch there to go with that photographic image of the other uh, uh, lady's hair there. Next, please. This was a friend of mine who used to work, had a, uh, one of those contracts with the post, post office where she used to, in her basement, she used to ship out bulk mailing and stuff, and she was just having her anniversary. And so she wanted, it was called Data Ease, and she wanted me to, I designed the logo and the whole concept for the announcement that she was sending out to those who would come to celebrate with her. Next. And now, I would t which I mentioned earlier, we're going into the presentation, but uh, historical context of the Panther, a limited uh, context of the Panther, which the symbol comes from Lowndes County, Alabama in 1965, when the Voters' Rights Act was passed. You had the uh, blacks, young blacks, Stokely Carmichael, many of them from SNCC, who went to Lowndes County to educate those blacks about their right to vote. Uh, many of them were sheriff coppers, couldn't read or write. And so they went and, uh, but you had the races who ran the county. And they, it was the Democratic Party, the, the, all of the races then. And uh, they had a white crop as their icon, which is a symbol of white supremacy. And so in order, but the blacks didn't want to be a part of the Democratic Party, nor the Republican Party. So they started the Lowndes County Freedom Organization. And they had to have a symbol, an icon, in order to be an official political organization. And so they seen these high school sports teams, the different animals, and so they chose the one that had the lion, the cat, which was the panther. So this is where the symbol comes from, Lowndes County, Alabama, during the Civil Rights era. Next, please. This is an actual photograph because you had those blacks who were, couldn't read or write. You had those racist whites who couldn't read or write. So when they went to the ballot, they could check the icon next to the uh, one who they wanted to vote for. And so this shows you vote November 8th, pull the lever for the Black Panther and go home. This is election in 1966. Next, please. So now we're going into the uh, presentation, some American history, I call it. Next, please. Here is a remix of the Panther symbol, a more recent remix that I've done of the symbol itself. Here again is showing the uh, early paper. And when I'm showing you at the bottom was when I initially started, we work on the paper out of the studio apartment of Huey uh, Elders Cleaver, he and myself basically in the beginning Huey Newton and Bobby Seale would come over in the evening after been organizing, and they were talking about the pigs. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to, uh, he gave me this I image here of a pig, and it was clip art, and I kind of had to touch it up and what have you. And each week we were going to put the badge number of the police who were uh, misusing his rights, oppressing the people in the community, abusing the people in the community. That badge number was going to be on the uh, pig drawing. But it came to me uh, because of the uh, limited critiquing evaluation I had from City College. It just came to me, why don't I stand it up on a, two hoofs, keep the tail in the snort, 
keep the buckle and the, the badge and the flies around it. And that became the symbol of the pig drawing that transcended uh, the Black Panther Party, the went national and became an international symbol that symbolized oppression. Uh, next, please. Here it is, what is the pig? And the definition of it was a low-natured beast that has no regard for law, justice, or the right of people, a creature that bites the hand that feeds it, a foul to prey traducer, usually found masquerading as the victim of an unprovoked attack. Now, this was a little quick, rough drawing, pen and ink, but as you see the little gray tones and textures, that was the cutout sheets that you, I showed you earlier that gave it, gave it uh, depth. Next, next, please. Here again is a little Bobby Hutton. This was about community control of police. This was after little Bobby Hutton, the first Panther, Hugh Newton and Bobby Seal, who mentored him. He was 15 years and a half uh, when he came into the party. He was murdered uh, April 6, April, April, uh, April 6, I think, two, four days after, two, four day, April 8th. Uh, four days after Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. He was then 17 and, and a half years of age. He was shot over 19 times by the Oakland police. It was then that we began to call for a com community control of police. Here we began to show the art transcending from just graphic into activist art and what have you. And so in the hand is the young man got a, a community control of police uh, flyer. Uh, we did put get it on the ballot at that time in conjunction with the, the sister city next to Oakland, Berkeley, California, progressive activists on the board there agreed. And we got it, uh, people voted on it. It did not make it, it lost by one vote, but it brought the attention for the need of police overview reboards around the country. But those that would be controlled by the people, not by the uh, police themselves. Next, please. Here again in 1968, you had oh, two or 300 rebellions in this country, across the country. You had the war in Vietnam going on. You had and the internal uh, resistance and rebellions inside the country. And so this was a play off of that. America spelled with three Ks. Uh, not something that I created, but I thought it was uh, relevant to use it in the context of, spell of this image. And uh, it says, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's hell outside, it's hell inside. This was 1968. There are a lot of art exhibits and shows that have been done around the year of 1968 because of the uh, dynamics of what took place in that year. Next plan, please. This one is one where we begin to use the biblical word Babylon to coin America. Uh, it was, this shows the pig ready for overkill, standing in front of a cutout of the Pentagon with a missile between his toe, a lynch rope in one hand, um, an AR-16 under the arm with a blood-sucking vulture with dollar signs on the tip of the butt of the gun. You got a hanging aid in one hand, dollar signs drooling out the mouth. And what you had in 1968, New Haven, Connecticut, you had Bobby Seal and Erica Huggins, two Panthers who were exonerated, who were charged, who were charged with the murder of a Panther, which finally found out in the process that it was agent provocateurs who did the murder, and they were released from prison. You had Kent, Ohio, at the university there, Kent State. You had four white students who were assassinated by the National Guard for protesting against the war in Vietnam. Augusta, Georgia, Jackson, Mississippi, Rutgers, and many other colleges where you had black students. You had uprisings and rebellions that were taking place during that time. Uh, also, you had the war in Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and the struggle of the Palestinians. All this and much more was going on in 1968. Next, please. You had John Carlos and Tommy Smith, who went to the Olympics and gave the uh, black power sign in, in 1968, it, it gave the black power sign, and, uh, be, and there were a lot of discussions behind that during that period in the community where, d d d with, with the Olymp some of them, 
to determine what they should do when they went there, but they couldn't come to a consensus. So this is what they decided to do, and other Olympians did made their decisions as well. Next, please. This is in the 19, following the 1968 Olympics. This is 1972. This is when Wayne Colette and Vince Matthew, two uh, cha Olympic champions, when they won their gold medal, the protest continued. They just stood there. They didn't, when the Ath national athletes played, they just stood there. They didn't put their hand over their heart, shed tears. This was their way of protesting. Next, please. As you see, this was the back of that paper called At Ease. Next, please. Here is a play off the Olympics, one I call the Olympics, where you get down, run the race, you come to the line, he wins, stands up on the podium, he's holding up the flag, got the medal around his, around his neck, and when he comes home, and when it's over, a nigga is a nigga is a nigga. Don't make a difference in the context of uh, you Olympic, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you be profiled in America. You had over 600,000, what, in New York? Before it was settled, young black and brown being profiled just because of the color they can, their skin. When they found out and did the, uh, did the, uh, uh, did the uh, I think they did a, a survey and they found out that less than 1% of those young people were found with contraband, but 45% of those whites who they did not search were had contraband. Next, please. And we talk about the military, it's all the same. Local police, the National Guard, the Marines, it all comes under Homeland Security today. That's where the orders come from. When you look at the brother murdered in Ferguson, you look at what they, all the, what they brought in, military formations, all those things, it just become aware of it. But this is something that's gone over 50, 100 years. Next, please. Here's one with then to your left was Henry Kishner, who was the Secretary of State, and to your right is a character, porch character of uh, Richard Nixon, who was then the President of the United States. And it says, and you got the globe, and on the globe it says Third World, Latin America, Africa, Asia. It says, ha, 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 good old American peace, peace on the, the missile. Next, please. Here again was uh, back in the day, we using a, I didn't start using a, a rat as a little avaricious businessman and also as an oppressive character, manipulator, uh, winding up his little toys, sending them off to war. They go to the war, they realize that they fighting the wrong war, and they come back and they turn on the US imperialists. Many of them joined the Black Panther Party. Next, please. This is called Peace with Honor. You had those who refused to go to the war. Some went underground, some went to prison, some left the country. And we had solidarity committees with the draft resistors in Scandinavia, in Canada, and here in the US. Because we were opposed to the war. Next, please, to war. Here's showing what war does to human beings, the psychological impact of war called U.S. government approved. The drugs, substance abuse, all that. You go, you go to San Francisco, you go to L.A., you go many places, you got nothing, nothing out there but homelessness. A lot of, lot of Viet, young Vietnam, Viet, I mean, uh, military vets and others. In the statistics, what they don't talk about too much, you got about, two a day who commit suicide in this country. Right now. Next, please. Here again was during that time, 1968. It says, our fight is not in Vietnam. Free the GIs. Our fight was not in Vietnam. The Vietnamese wasn't cause of unemployment. The Vietnamese wasn't cause of inferior education. The Vietnamese wasn't murdering us and brutalizing us. Our fight was not in Vietnam. Our fight was right here in the US. Next, please. 
Here at that same paper were some young Latino brothers who were our allies at that time who were charged with the killing of a San Francisco policeman. They had no lawyer. They had no, no, no way to represent themselves. So they asked us if we would share our paper. We shared our paper with them about four or five issues so that they could speak to their case. We helped them get a lawyer. And they were eventually found not guilty of the killing of the San Francisco policeman. Now, you can imagine if they wouldn't have had the kind of us help or assistance from the Black Panther Party, they would probably be dead now or still in prison. Next, please. Here's again another one of those issues, design elements that we use to show our solidarity with. Next, please. Here's one of the images I did showing the US, US imperialist nurse knowledge little piglets. All these little piglets uh, with names on them or involved or directly involved in the, in the colonization of other people, third world people in the world. Here again is how you show the U.S. imperialist spoon fed, how it spoon fed the apartheid government of Israel, the apartheid government of Israel, then 50 years ago. Next, please. Boycott letters. You had Susan Chavez and the farm workers were walking down the avenue where our central headquarters was one day. We heard the noise. We went out there, and it was Susan Chavez and 50 farm workers. We asked them what was going on. They told us that they were on their way to Sacramento to protest against the chemicals that were, were being sprayed on the lettuce that were harming the, the, farm, uh, the, 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 the workers in the fields. And so they said that they were hungry and they needed a place to eat. And so we worked it out where they could go to our school and we fed them. So we marched with them from our headquarters to our school, which was about 30 blocks, and we broke bread for lunch with about 50 uh, farm workers along with Cesar Chavez. And thereafter, they continued on to the state capitol, picking up uh, supporters along the way. And this is why this paper was done, to show our solidarity with that issue and the farm workers. Next, please. We want decent housing fit for the shelter of human beings. That was one of the 10 points of the 10-point platforming program of the Black Panther Party. And here you show the, the mother trying to protect her baby from the rodents, and the rodents coming around, attacking, sneaking up to attack the baby. It was meant to be provocative in that way to bring attention to that issue. Next, please. Here was one that was done when they had the unmanned Sputniks going up into space. And at that time, you, you had to think about these things and the most, you had to be devil's advocate to think about what the possibilities of, what, could, what this could be possibly about. And uh, it says, whatever is good for the oppressor has got to be bad for us. And here you got, go back please. And here, here you have the uh, pig up on the deck of this pig ship. And he says, hey, handle them slaves with, with care. We're gonna need them for Mars, Pluto, and all those other planets. Then you see the spit, you see them coming off the, uh, the ship saying, okay, I knew we should have stopped this shit before it got off the ground. Then you had the pig over with the pig with the, the shovel and the pick, and he's saying, okay, goddammit, don't take 400 years this time. This is the new frontier of slavery, possibility, or, or, new, or possibly a place where they can use to possibly incarcerate, disappear people. All these kinds of things. There's a possibility what's, what's going to happen when uh, they able to, if they're ever able to, uh, uh, to make it where they can have actual living situations on long term for masses of people. Next, please. Here's one I played off of it too uh, when they first went up, and before you even thought there were blacks in the, in the program and stuff. And when you, when it's like white flight, when blacks would move into a neighborhood, whites would move out. <laughs> and it says white only. And it says, ah, oh, at last, up on the moon. Next, please. This is a, a, a graphite pencil with a watercolor wash in it. It's about save the children. Next, please. Here's another one, save the children. This could be anywhere in the world today. 
That's right here in this country. We, we, they blind us to all this, but this is everywhere. Next, please. Freedom. Here again, you can see clearly how I use the different patterns and textures to make the wallpaper and the wood kind of sense in, in, the, in the artwork itself. Uh, not necessarily the design is in, in, in scale. It's how it works. If it's relevant and it works, that's how I work. A broom ain't really that big. So a, a, a dustpan doesn't really come up to your knee, but it's what works, what aesthetically works. Next, please. Here's also one we did called Public Housing USA. This was one of three, and this was done when we were working in the, uh, on the uh, projects, the housing, public housing, listening to their concerns, and we went to the city council meetings in Oakland and uh, came up with this interpretation based on their concerns, expression of their concerns at the uh, city council meeting. And it says, uh, story by the people, illustration by Emory. It says, hello, public housing authority. This is a tenant of your slum housing calling, calling you again. I have rats and roaches in my apartment it needs effective extermination. I have a stopped up toilet in a leaky sink. My house hasn't been painted in years. We need more garbage pickup. I'm disabled, live on the third floor, have no elevator and very poor light. My children have no place to play. Stairs that need repair are hazards to our health. Stop the police harassment. Years pass, nothing happened. Action to be continued. So we just was done three in, the, in that series. There is, I think, one of three. Next, please. Here again was talking about when Richard Nixon, Nixon had coined the word black capitalism. We say Richard Nixon coined the word black capitalism can't be much too much. So, but a little weed. So we make black capitalism a little weed. When you chop down imperialism, you gonna, the little weed gonna fall. Next, please. His father and son instilling inspiring determination. Next. Here the one says Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, California, Chicago, New York, America. Freedom is a constant struggle. Next, please. Here's one of Justice Scales. Uh, I got a more, a more upgraded one I've done. I'll show you remix when you get to the newer images. Next, please. Here again is I just want to testify. I'm, going, I'm not going to sit around any longer. I got freedom on my mind. This was a scratch board, it looked like a woodcut, but that was a scratch board. I don't know if that's what you call it today, where you paint it and then you scratch out and you get to you undercut what comes up was white, but you got them now with many different color boards and this gets a sense of woodcut, yeah. And then I took the border from one of those certificate borders and, play, and put it around the edges. So you can use whatever you choose to. At, we used to find you say, well, this is four certificates. Well, you can use any way you choose to, if it works. Then I had clipped out this image that I had in the books that I used to look through a lot of black books from the South during that time. And, and when I had, sometimes when I wanted to do something, I could have recall to, to go back and know what I want to use with the artwork. And so that's what I integrated that into the artwork as well, calling it freedom. Next, please. Here's again is another one, we shall survive without a doubt. These are panther cubs. These were babies in the panther, they're now in their 40s. But they were during that period in time. Next please. Vote for survival. Free food program. Can you see it up there clear? Is it sharp or do you need more lights out? Okay, it's okay, next please. Here again is one saying, vote. a lot of people think that, uh, uh, what's the name, Clinton, Hillary Clinton was the one first woman to run for president. 
black woman, Shirley Chisholm, was the first black woman to run for president. We supported Shirley Chisholm when she ran for president. We held rallies with her uh, when she came to the Bay Area and what have you back in the day. A vote for Chisholm is a vote for survival. Unbought, unbossed. That was her slogan. Next, please. All power to the people. This is showing many of the many collage of the social programs in the background. Of the, we had free breakfast program, free health clinics, alternative to schools, all those things were part of the social fabric of the Black Panther Party. Next, please. Sickle cell anemia, a disease that predominantly in, impacted the African American community in this country. Uh, there was no cure. There was no, no discussions around it. Uh, we began to talk about the disease. We did over 100,000 free testing throughout the United States where we had chapters and branches where you come, you get your finger pricked, and then they test, and then they put it in the tube and you could check to see if you had sickle cell. You had a panther who was from Houston. No, he was from Dallas. Uh, he had been sick all his life and didn't never know what the problem was. And when he wrote his book, he said he took the test when he was in the Panthers, and that's when he found out that he had the sickle cell. All up until his life, he didn't know what his problem was. Next, please. Here's the front paper again. It was designed to impact and talk about the issue, call it black genocide, sickle cell anemia. It's not just talking about the issue, but it's how you word it as well in the context of the sickle cells themselves and the design overlaying the text. Using what we had, lim minimum limited materials that we had, we created a whole nother concept of design that perhaps would not have came about if we would have had access to all these other materials that were there that we couldn't afford. So out of using what you got, sometimes you can come up with a, a amazing new possibilities. Next, please. Here again, it's talking about germ warfare declared against blacks. This is about the Tuskegee experiment. In 1939, you had these black sharecroppers who were given $50 to be in this experiment. I think about 99 of them or so. Uh, they, they, that was a lot of money for them. Uh, and they were put into the experiment in 1947. They found a cure, and it was penicillin. But they didn't give the penicillin to them. They kept them in the study. Until 1972, the disease impacting them, their families, everyone who they were interacting with. And it was in 1972 when you had these investigative reporters got this information. They couldn't get it published in the regular daily papers. So they began to share it with not only the Panthers, but other alternative progressive press. And when we begin to put this out into the newspaper, that's when the study stopped in 1972. Next, please. This is called Say Seniors Against the Fearful Environment. That was a senior citizen program we had, where we should take them up, pick them up to satellite houses, take them shopping, pick, pick them to the bank. They had a program that they would do at our community centers on the weekends. All these things have actual photographs of these programs as well. But this one, we were talking about it in the context of when Oakland, California was talking about spending 54, I think it was $54,000 on a helicopter to patrol the community and talking about fighting against crime. What we're, what we're saying is that, what we're saying here is that if you really want to fight crime, you take that $54,000 and you invest it in young people to take the seniors shopping. You invest it in to take the seniors to cash their checks. That's how you, you, you don't cut into crime by having a $54,000 helicopter in the air. You take it and you invest in young people. Next, please. Today's news. I mean, you got so much, it's so much homeless until it's, you don't know how you're gonna, how this gonna be handled. I mean, you got young people out there. You go to Oakland, you go to San Francisco. I, I'm, I can only speak to where I can see on, a, on an everyday basis. 
It's, it's beyond comprehension. Next, please. Hypertension kills. I'm hungry. I'm unemployed. I'm black. And it's just a matter of the lines. Hypertension kills. You have to express that in the visual. If you just have nothing that expresses that, you don't get that real feeling. You got to get the feeling. Sometimes you have to become a, a, a method actor when you're thinking about something. How would it feel if hypertension kills? If you're hungry, you're unemployed. How can you express that in the lines of the artwork or whatever it is that you're doing? Next, please. Here again, one dealing with the uh, apartheid system of South Africa. And I, ha I had a book called The House of Bondage, which is the only book I had. And so I took excerpt pictures from that book of the exploitation and repression and put them on the books of matches. And like the spark of the match that continues to light the prairie fire. And when it lights that fire, you have this freedom fighter that comes out. And at the bottom it says, repression breeds resistance. Next, please. Here's one of my images. This amazing poster cre created by the Cuban artist of two of my art images back in the day. Uh, by OSPAL, Organization of Solidarity with People from Asia, Africa, and Latin America. When people used to go to Cuba, some of the youngsters who, and folks who would go to work, help with the sugarcane crops in the brigades then, they would see this art and they say, you didn't do that art. The Cubans did that art because they seen these posters and they thought I was copying the Cuban art for a long while. But here, for after a while, they became realized that it was the other way around and it was in solidarity. So there was no problem about them copying it, what have you, in that context then. And so uh, I'm going to show you where the next two images, we'll show you where the work images came from. Next, please. These are the two images of mine, 1967. This one's also in 1967. If you go back again, you will see those two images, how they cropped them, shifted them, the whole bit. And I got a newer image that I've done of that, well, I'll show you, that I've remixed in the, in the more recent images. Next, please. Here again is another one of my images, which they did, and they said it in four languages, solidarity with the African-American people, August 18th, 1968, in four different languages. Uh, next, please. Here is the image. This is how we knew they were reading the paper, because it was a little two by four or four by four image in the interior of the paper. Next, please. Afro-American solidarity with the oppressed people of the world. This is one of our earlier posters that we created. Next. This one says, I, Gerald Ford, am the 38th puppet of the United States. That's just like, we knew that back then. <laughs> Next, please. This is on Halloween. And it says, trick or treat, pig, trick or treat. <laughs> and you had, then was, Richard Nixon was the president. And I think the vice president was Spiro Agnew. He was around here from somewhere around here. Crooks, criminals running the government. Next, please. This is the one when we talked about the COINTELPRO conspiracy to destroy the Black Panther Party, COINTELPRO, counterintelligence program to discredit and destroy the party by any means necessary. Spent over $22 million plus murders, all kinds of misinformation campaigns. Next, please. I wonder if Nixon is bugging us now. Next, please. I wonder if Trump is spying on us now. Next, please. Corporate King Nixon, corporate profit, defense spending going up, all that stuff. Consumer buying power, all that's declining. Next, please. Same thing. Call, same, 50 years, 100 years later, same thing. Next, please. Class Brothers. Next, please. <laughs> we are soldiers in the Army. We have to fight, although we have to die. 
We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. My mother was a soldier. She had in her hand the freedom plow. And when she got old and couldn't fight anymore, she said, we got to get up and fight anyhow. My father was a soldier. He had in his hand the freedom plow. And when he got old and couldn't fight anymore, he said, we got to get up and fight anyhow. Now, we, now we're all our soldiers in the Army, and we have in our hand the freedom plow. When we get old and can't fight anymore, we got to get up and fight anyhow. Next, please. Cautious surviving. Prison cr surviving is criminal. Prison camps USA, the unknown slaves. That's what we used to talk about, the prison camps USA, the unknown slave. Today you call it the prison industrial complex. When you talk about the prison industrial complex, you're talking about the privatizations of prisons. And you get into the privatizations of prisons, you're talking about making money and profit. And in order to make a profit, you have to have a product. You have to have a certain amount of product on your shelf. If you don't have a certain amount of product on your shelf, you don't make no money. So in the context of the prisons, there are going to be a certain amount of prisoners in these private prisons going to always be incarcerated because the fact if they're not, they're not going to make no product, no profit. So it's about a great part of it about profit. Next, please. Why must black people look at each other through prison bars? Where is our freedom? Those who are incarcerated in maximum security, the families are in minimum security locked in this whole thing of incarceration for profit, for hate, and other reasons. Next, please. I was just thinking about this image I said, and I seen these images look like they came from the same place, but they came from two different books that I used to look at. But when it came to me to do it, I remembered that it just comes to me. It just comes like that from looking through them all the time, how to, what to go back and reference in the artwork. And so I pulled those both together. And uh, I pair, based on the, how I felt to express the image and the language of the image in the words and the text, is how I came about to do the text itself. And initially, in the early days, I used to paraphrase from time to time and interpret. But then I got the feeling of what I wanted to images to say when I added to context, or, I mean text to the images themselves. It says, my suffering, my bitterness, my loneliness, I'm not going to let it get me down. I'm not going to let it turn me around. Next, please. George Jackson lives. George Jackson was a brother who went to prison as a common criminal. He became enlightened and politicized and political in, in, while he was incarcerated. Uh, he wanted to um, start the first chapter. He started the first chapter of the Black Panther Party in prison at San Quentin Prison. Um, he was assassinated in, in, as well in San Quentin Prison. Next, please. Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, and the Rays in the Black. You can kill a freedom fighter, but you can't kill freedom. In relationship to Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, that story is on, you can get it on YouTube, The Murder of Fred Hampton. Next, please. Carl Hampton, no kin to Fred Hampton. Every year they do a big ceremony for him in Houston, Texas. The young man was 21 years old. At the time, we were not having to open up any more chapters, so he charted People's Party II, play off the Black Panther Party, People's Party II. But when we did open up a chapter, they cleaned up the streets where there was no illegal drug, anything going on illegal. Seniors could come out, walk the streets, all that. One day, he, they had gotten a conf, confront argument with the Houston police. The police left. They came back about a couple of weeks later. Somebody told him that the police was out in the street, and he went to see what was going on. They had allowed the police to go up into the church tower of the street where he came out of. And when he came out onto the street from the church tower, they had a police sniper assassinate him. It was thereafter that uh, a lot of outrage uh, behind it. But you also had the same thing happen in New Orleans, where you had police dressed as nuns and priests who went to a Panther house, knocked on the door, and when they asked who it was and they looked out, they shot through the door and the sister got shot through the chest. She survived. So these were some of the kind of things and actions that were taking place during the 60s. 
in, in, in the context of the, of the, uh, the genocidal acts on the part of the government against the Black Panthers. Next, please. This is showing political prisoners in the context of the period of the Black Panther Party. There were many, many more. There are still Panthers who are incarcerated to this very day. Uh, you got at least 20 Panthers who are still incarcerated in, in prisons to this very day, over 35, 45 years. Next, please. Free the New York 21 and all political prisoners. Tupac's mom was a member of the New York 21, Athene Shakur. Next, please. And as you, you, you can go back to the other one. Now, designing here was just where I dropped out the the continuous the uh, the, the tones in the in the art to make it into black and white the art the figures and kind of play with them a little bit, clean them up here and there, and to give it that feel. But that was an actual photograph. Next, please. Free Angela. Angela Davis was a comrade of ours in, in solidarity. Close, close, comrade. Next, please. Kidnap. This is called Kidnap because I remember one day it came to the Panther office and we knew something, but we couldn't figure out what it was. And we could see people doing stuff that normally wasn't being done in front of the office. That evening we left, we went to the uh, two blocks away, three blocks away to the filling station. All of a sudden, you had the police come down on the federal marshal. They sweeped on the car with machine guns and a whole bit. I was in one car with other Panthers, and Bobby Seale and other Panthers were in another car. They snatched Bobby Seale out the car and took him away. We got in touch with our lawyers to find out that they had took him to the federal building in San Francisco, and they were sending him back to Chicago because they were claiming that he gave a speech at the Democratic Convention demonstrates in the protest against the war in Vietnam outside of the, uh, the Democratic Convention. They were saying he incited to riot, which was not the case. So we call this kidnap. Next, please. This is when Bobby Seale was in, in, incarcerated, as opposed to doing a court, some, a court illustration like the amazing court artists do. I wanted to do an interpretation of what took place in the courtroom based on the facts of what was, was, was verified in the context that Bill, Bobby was, lawyer got sick, he wanted to represent himself, he was denied that right. Every time his name came up in the court, he would object, as opposed to taking him out of the courtroom, they gagged him and chained him in the chair and kicked him over in the chair. Never in the history had this ever happened before in the court. Never, except thereafter, it was also another Panthers called Angola III who they did the same thing to, chained him and gagged him in the courtroom. So this was basically saying a black man has no right that a white racist political judicial system is bound to respect. Next, please. Here again is when Bobby Seale was on trial in New Haven, and they were trying to execute him. And this was the whole purpose of them setting him and Erica up, because they figured they cut off the head, they could kill this organization, and uh, I, found this picture of 1930s of this guy in this lecture chair. And it came to me when I seen that picture, I found a picture of Bobby Seale facing the same way. And I incorporated Bobby's picture into that image and took all the tones out and played with it and sh to show that this was what they were trying to do to Bobby Seale in New Haven, because they still had the lecture chair in New Haven at that time. Next, please. Hallelujah, the might and the power of the people is beginning to show. This was after Bobby Seale and Erica Huggins were exonerated of the charges in New Haven, Connecticut. Next, please. We always showed our solidarity with the, the original caretakers of the land. AIM, the American Indian Movement, was our allies, our comrades, Linda Peltier, all those were our allies. So now I'm going into one more, and then I'm going into the more recent stuff. Next, please. This is uh, Sonia Sanchez's first poetry book, Homecoming. She asked me to do the cover for it when she was a teacher out of San Francisco State, 1969, going to 1970, during that period. Next, please. This is a, a remix of it. 
I got several remixes of it. I don't have them all in here, but I have several remixes of that done of this one. Next, please. This is called Malcolm. This is one. This was a kind of a watercolor and combination. Then I integrated it in and put some of those texture patterns in in it and stuff like that. Next, please. Dr. King. Next, please. This says health is wealth. I like to say yes, yeah, non toxic. Next, please. Here again, I call this Malcolm the Warrior. Next, please. Here's a remix of one. This sister used to sit and uh, live in back of us. And every week she would get her paper and sit out there and read her paper. So I wanted to illustrate this. I did an earlier illustration. I remixed this illustration of her sitting and reading her paper. Next, please. Here is again is a historical one. Uh, that I've remixed as well called People's Free Food Program. And here he's saying, here we are living in the land of plenty while we the people starve. Next, please. This brother used to be slushed. <coughs> but he would come get his paper every week. No matter, no matter what, he would get his paper. And so I also wanted to show the, the depth of those who read and supported and were in solidarity with the Black Panther through these images. Next, please. We were sharecroppers working the same fields, some of the same fields that the sharecroppers are working today. Next, please. Here again is where these last two I showed you, where I've scanned in some of those materials. And I also integrate them into the art as well today. Next, please. Here's that one I told you I remixed of it. It says, our struggle continues from one generation to the next. Next, please. Here one showing the, uh, which I think this was 19, 2005 when we had a celebration of the Banth anniversary of the Black Panther Party and serving the people, body and soul. We met all the different social programs that we had integrated into the collage. A lot of people in Winston-Salem, the first chapter we had in the South, they had an ambulance a free ambulance service, because the ambulance couldn't, wouldn't come in a timely fashion or come in at all. So they got together and got certified. And when they got certified, the community helped them buy an ambulance. So you had the Black Panther uh, Community Ambulance Service in Chicago, I mean in uh, Winston-Salem. In Chicago, when we had the free busing to prison programs all across the country, where we take loved ones of those who had people incarcerated to come for free to go visit and connect. In Chicago, they were given a Greyhound bus, but they took the Greyhound off of it and put a panther on it and called it the free bus into prison program in Chicago. Then we used to have cars and what have you all across the country with people who would volunteer those services to take people. The free breakfast programs, the senior citizen program, all term to school that we had, liberation schools, all those things were part of the, the uh, Black Panther powder fabric. Next, please. Here's a, re a more recent remix of one that I call Freedom. And you got the blip with the plane with the word educate to liberate. Next, please. This one was Tony Morrison's book, Blue as Eye. This is, a, uh, I was asked to be a part of a uh, uh, exhibition for banned books. And they, I chose Tony Morrison's book to illustrate. And it was about this young woman, in essence, who mother thought she was very, wasn't a beautiful child and she's gonna have a horrible life. And she did on her journey, was very hard, she lived in this illusion of every world. But on the last page, what Toni Morrison said is that she could have been assassinated. And that kind of stuck with me. So when I, from that, I came to the conclusion with the illustration that she could, you can be psychologically assassinated. You don't have to be assassinated with a bullet. You could be psychologically assassinated. And that's what this was about, psychological assassination. Next, please. Here we call reparations. This is when I did an exhibition with Greg Morizumi, Japanese American, who did an ex exhibition, Japanese American, African American, uh, demanding reparations. Next, please. Here again was also a part of the ex exhibit using the words to spell out the word reparations, and using this symbol, it's a West African symbol uh, there that said, represent you are a slave of him whose handcuffs you wear. Next, please. 
freedom. Next, please. Justice resists unjust law. This is a woodcut. This is in collaboration with Fabiana Rodriguez, Chicano artist, where these were uh, carved seven feet by three and a half feet, and they were steam, or they were rolled print on, out on the, on the cement. They'll call this one Peace. This is where I integrated some African fabric behind the different artwork to put together, called Peace. Next, please. Here's a remix of a historical one. Now I'll call that one piece. Next, please. Here, uh, and Black Scholar 1987 asked me to do a political art for the cover of the Black Scholar magazine as relate to uh, what the politic, black politics were at that time. And uh, to me, <laughs> yeah, the jackass and the elephant were well, not the same trough. Next, please. I'll call this one Toxic Waste. Now, you got the Republican bullying the Democrat, but after a while, you're going to have the Democrat bullying the Republican. It's toxic waste. Next, please. This one says, Real Talk. It says, Mama, why, why didn't President Obama pardon Leonard Peltier also? Sadly, because of government's ongoing deep and extreme hatred baby. Next, please. Fascist xenophobe. Commander in chief. He's still doing the torture and carrying on in Guantanamo Bay. Still going on from one president to the next. Next. Call this, this word figure war, W-A-R. If you see the concept of it. Next, please. Here again, drone warfare. You have collateral damage uh, from the drone warfare. Where is it taking place? Pakistan, Afghanistan, Africa. For every so-called terrorist they kill, they're killing about 14, 15 innocent people. So you're creating more hatred and more vengeance instead of solving the problem. Next, please. This one I did when Obama was the president. And this was done based on the fact of him, when he went to get a Nobel Peace Prize, he did not give a peace talk. He gave a war statement. So that made him a Nobel fraud. But also, they got together. He, gets to, he got together every week with over 30, 40 people or more, where well, they decided on who they're going to assassinate in the world. So he was carrying out the, gov the, the policies of the government. Next, please, kill list. They had a kill list. Who they, you know, who they going to kill every week? This is what war does to human beings. You got people, we, got, we don't really understand that you got people from uh, depleted, Uranium, no eyes, no, no lips, two or three arms, maybe three eyes, all de deformed, disfigured, because of that we don't see this. We don't see this as human beings. But this is, this is what they put, this is, what they, this is what war does to human beings. No matter the reaction or the reaction, it's going to be the same. Next. Guilty of genocide, genocide, deliberate killing of a large group of people, especially those of a particular ethnic group or nation. Next, please. Free the land by any means necessary. Boycott, divest, down with apartheid. Next, please. BDS, boycott, divest, sanctions, down with apartheid. Now they're trying to stifle free speech or free expression because if you are support or solidarity to Palestinians, they want to repress you, call you a terrorist, call you all kinds of things because of the fact of you're talking about the reality of what exists and the power of that movement. Next, please. Peace heals, war kills. Next, please. I was contemplating the word peace when I did this. 
It came to me that peace was being attacked. Peace is not peace today. Peace is being attacked. Next, please. Peace is being bloodied. Military contractors, they make all the money. Over 60% of the American uh, domestic, uh, gross domestic product of money is made from war. 60%. This is a war economy. Next, please. This is the one I did on Yemen in regards to what was going on. I did this even before uh, it became, uh, people became aware of Yemen or what was happening in Yemen. At the time when you had the US and you had the British denying that they were even involved in Yemen until it came to the point that they had to acknowledge that they were involved and that they were doing the uh, con reconnaissance and everything else for the Saudis and giving them the, uh, the military equipment to go in and to create the genocide that's taking place in Yemen. Millions food insecurity, millions displaced, thousands injured, humanitarian impact blockade, thousands dead, water shortage. That sounds like a hurricane. That sounds like a mass fire. But it's, it's just human beings. This is, this is the reality. War is like a hurricane. War is like mass destructions of fire. So we can't see from these natural disasters what we are doing as human beings creating human disasters. Right now you got, you got thousands of people who are catching cholera, over seven million, the famine, one of the first famines in the world, food shortages, all that. Next, please. Mother Earth. That's Mother Earth. Next, please. Arab, Muslim, Islam. U.S. government coded word for terrorist hate discrimination. Next. U.S. government. Black male, U.S. government coded word for hate, discriminate, kill. Next. As much as things change, some things stay the same. Why do they get to brutalize and murder us and we get to blame? Police terror, USA. Next, please. The black code, this is based on the black code. What, is, what? black code was Emmett Till was killed because of the black code. You could say the slave code or what do you want to call it? But I call it the black code, and that's a black person has no rights, which an institutional racist judicial system is bound to respect. It gives the appearance of being fair and just when the biased decisions have already been decided. All we got to look at is the not guilty verdicts of all these policemen who've been murdering black and brown people just recently. Next, please. Next. Legal lynching, then and now. A black person has no rights that a white racist judicial system has ever been bound to respect. Next. Attorney General, USA. Black Lives Matter, justice now. That's what Jack Lives about justice. They try to, they're trying to reframe it. They're trying to demonize it. They're trying to make it illegal because it's about justice. That black lives matter. Blacks want the beauty of life. They want to look at the flowers, the air, appreciate all the, the things that go in the quality of life. Next, please. Dare to struggle, dare to win. Next. This is a collaboration with Aboriginal artist Richard Bell in Campbelltown in New Zealand, in Australia. This is 20 foot by 30 foot, as you see some of the earlier images that I showed you are integrated into this. Next, please. Here's my Richard Bell and I in, in, in Brisbane. That's a, you got a little piece of him right there. We did three murals and in, in, in then there. Next, please. He didn't want to use the one I did on reparations because that represented the same colors of the aboriginals in, in, Aust in, Austra in, in Australia. Excuse me, I said New Zealand, it should be Australia. 
And also we did this one, time of special, John Carlos and Peter Norman. Peter Norman was a white runner who ran second in the race. He was from Australia. He was in solidarity with John Carlos and Tommy Smith. He wore the badge for Olympians for Human Rights. When he went back to his country, he was demonized for being in solidarity with them. He also, had, he also was able to qualify for the 1972 Olympics, but they refused to allow him to run because of his solidarity with John Carlos and Tommy Smith. Next, please. These are my images interpreted by the Zapatista Mayan Women Collective in Chiapas. I've uh, been there about four or five times and collaborated with the uh, Zapatistas. I was invited by Idello Art Center, Caleb Duarte, and they took six, they chose the images and remixed them. And we had a project called Zapatero Negra, showing the aesthetics of each movement and how those, the aesthetics, the language, the talk, the dress, all that, how that art, all that played into the artwork and the culture, inspiration for both of those movements. Next, please. Here's another one. Next, 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 next. Here's when we went into the jungle and we had to paint the school. This is dirt floors, tin roof, uh, no sides coming in. And we had, when we were supposed to paint it in three days, it rained one, so we had a day and a half. And we had to sleep, sleep up on the platform. You had to bring your, all your paint, you had to bring your, your food. You had to, all they can give you is tender love and care. And, and you can eat what they eat, but they can't afford to give you anything. So when you go there, you go there with a commitment of solidarity in relationship to uh, doing whatever it is that you are going to do. There's about 13 or 14 of us who worked on this project together. Next, please. Here's what we were able to do within a day or so before we had to leave to go back. And you had to go out to outhouses, hole in the ground. That's what you use as the bathroom. Next, please. Here's, I'm in the store, a Zapatista store, where they were, I was being introduced, because we came back the next year to paint this store, about 18 or 19 of us. Next, please. This is what we did. And they wanted it around solidarity, around uh, health, education, all those issues that they were involved in, the Mayans. And this is what we came up with in the collective, uh, all of us working together. Next, please. That's the Zapatero Zap dials that were part of the installations that were made on, on the site. Next, please. These are kind of, these next two are images that I incorporated in my contribution to the, uh, to the mural itself. As you see, it says solidarity, education, production, culture. Next, please. They call themselves people of the corn. This is IOZ Anapa in solidarity with the 43 students missing in, in, in uh, Guerrero, the state of Guerrero in Mexico. Next, please. This is when I visit school in Oakland with the young people. And this is Allendale Tigers in Oakland, California. This is in Urbis in Manchester, England. When I went there and had the uh, exhibit in Urbis in Manchester, England, 1969, I did a master class with young people who were dealing with their self-esteem, not necessarily with the content of the artwork, in, but as developing with their art, their self-esteem. And so this is what uh, a couple of months before the exhibition took place. Next, please. This is the images of that exhibition in Urbis in Manchester, England. We had uh, desk with reading materials connected to the desk that we were required reading, that when, when people came in, they could sit down and read the same materials that the Black Panther Party were required to read. We also had audios and videos that they could look at. Uh, the artwork was layered in a, an amazing way. Uh, this exhibit went on from, I think, October 1968 to April 1969, and it had over 43,000 people who came through there. They wanted to keep it longer, but they couldn't because they had to go to New York to the New Museum of Temporary Art. But it was an amazing exhibit. Urbis doesn't exist anymore. But next, please. This was opening night there. Here is a, 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 about the twist symbol when I collaborated with a Maori artist in New Zealand. 
And I found this twist symbol online because I wanted to figure out what I was going to do. And that's a green twist, a single twist. In essence, what it says, well, we may go different paths, but we'll always come back together. And I was trying to, I told that to the Maori artist. He said, oh, that's just a plain, simple symbol. You know, everybody likes it, but it's nothing, you know, extraordinary about it. So, but I say, okay, well, how am I going to make this symbol relevant and have an impact? And so what I did is I incorporated the Maori flag into the symbol. And the next image shows you what I came up with. Next, please. So this became the image that I did. And I had a Maori uh, brother who uh, uh, interpreted in Maori the language of overcoming oppression is our path to unity in Maori. Next, please. There's the exhibit. We, this exhibit was in the hood. This was the internet. This was uh, Auckland International uh, Art Festival, but they had never had nothing out in the hood, in the areas in the hardcore they call it. But you had so many young people coming back and forth, who were interacting, and engaging with, and talking with. This so happened when this writer was doing his story on the festival. And because he seen what was happening, go back please, because he was seeing what was happening, he wrote that that was the best of the overall festival because of the engagement and the, and the acting of the common folks and the people in the community, particularly young folks coming in and talking with us and communicating with us. Next please. This is the first time I went to uh, New Zealand. I was there for 41 days for artists in residency. Uh, and they, these are on the streets up next to the University of Elam International School of Fine Arts. I was invited there. Uh, but there was so much interest in my being there at that time that they canceled that. And I went to North and the South Island for 41 days talking about my artwork and the history of the Black Panther Party. Next, please. This is also when I was invited to an art school of Samoans in New Zealand. So this was amazing, amazing artists. I mean, I went in there, I seen, I seen pictures of Miles Davis they were doing, Tupac. I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, first thing a lot of every time I would travel, young people, first thing would always happen. Did you know Tupac? <laughs> Next, please. Here's at the library, at the main library when we was invited there and we're talking when they were making plans about a demonstration protesting against some land that was being confiscated uh, and that they wanted to do some uh, uh, images around, so we were discussing that. Next, please. This is in, uh, this is in uh, Argentina when I was invited to try Marchi. It's a group on the weekends where they do these, uh, every year they had this bring artists and teachers come in to, to talk about art and they invited me to be one of the presenters. And this is my present, they have a, professional uh, interpreter, all that is a part of it. Two big screens, about twice as big as this wall, those screens are up on the stage. Football, basketball stadium, huge basketball stadium. They have about five to 7,000 young people who come through this tri marchy when I was there. Next, please. This was after giving the presentation. In the quarter, they had all the young artists selling their goods. Outside, on the, they had a skateboarding, and they had a music stand where they had music going on. And maybe 10, maybe 25 minutes, then they get the word, then you go back in and the other presenter presents and what have you. Next, please. This is that DBD, I think. This, but this is in Portugal. This is four floors of uh, ex exhibition. E each floor you go up, they had painted an image of, the, of mine on each floor. But each floor wasn't work of mine. Some of it, dealt with different uh, uh, social issues. Next, please. Excuse me. This is on one, one of the images that were on the floor. As you see, that's one of the ones I remixed. That's the original image that I remixed from, as you've seen earlier. Next, please. Here again, you're seeing how they did it on the walls and what have you. Next, please. This is all a part of that exhibit. Next, please. Now, this here is in that same image, but this is in Nottingham at Nottingham Contemporary, where they had an ex exhibition there. Next, please. This is in Bogota, Colombia, at Banco de la Republica, uh, two years ago. I had an exhibition there. 
And this is standing outside of the announcement of the sign of the, at there for the exhibition. Next, please. Here is on the streets. This is showing you the same street on two sides. When you're going up, when you're going up the street, you see this here. When you're coming down the street, you see that from the other side of the, of the street, of the display there. Next, please. This is at the uh, Lorraine, this Lorraine Hansberry, uh, 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 in, in, I think in Tennessee, where Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. It's now, uh, they have a civil rights uh, museum there. And Black Panther and the artwork is included in that exhibition there. Next, please. This was dealing with uh, uh, the issue of immigration and the whole bit. When you're talking about Arizona then, now, as we see, this has become a whole nother insane situation of uh, racism, deep, deep rooted racism involved in it. Because when you talk about immigration, you're talking about south of the border, but you're also talking about black and brown as well. You're not just talking, you're talking about all many, many, many cultures. Next, please. This is uh, my contribution to uh, image uh, and solidarity, artists in solidarity with Palestine. Uh, these are about as tall as this wall, about as wide as, each of us had a space about this wide. And it was uh, around the issue of uh, water and a whole bit. And it says, free the land on um, this one I, I did. Next, please. This is the opening night showing all the artists who contribute. You had an you had a Asian American artist, you had a you had indigenous artists, you had a Latino artist, you had a Japanese American artist, you had a, a Jewish American artist, you had Afrocentric artists, all integrated Arab American artists, artists from Palestine included in it. And we had workers and helpers who assisted us with the mural itself as well. Next please. Here is standing with some of the young Palestinian kids after the mural, in front of the mural. Next, please. That's a double by accident. Next, please. Here again is you dealing with the issue of, uh, of the water issue in Haiti when you had over 8,000, 10,000 deaths from the water being urinated in by the UN forces that caused cholera and over 100,000 people ill and sick and the UN really not accepting their responsibility for the cause of the, that, is, that situation. So this was on the uh, cover of the Haiti Solidarity uh, publication, which I had done this prior to that. Next, please. Uh, Mama said HIV AIDS is an act of genocide in Africa, and it's an epidemic in our community. And why? It's an epidemic because the fact that you can't get the uh, generic drugs, the pharmaceutical companies, the drugs, the, uh, the generic, generic drugs that can help prolong life are really not being distributed in the, in, the, in, the, in the context of serving a broad spectrum of people who need it. Next, please. This is called Father's Love. Next, please. Mother's love. He got a less than one percent of the youngsters out there. Call this mental bondage, gang banging, looking bullets, talking bullets, back and forth. Next, please. The same image. I went back to New Zealand the last last year, year for last, and I worked with some young people again in South Auckland, and they had looked at the images and they wanted to use that image, but in a more positive in a more manner of healing because they got a lot of gangs over there. They got bloods, they got crips, they got all kind of gangs in New Zealand. And, but they wanted to use the mocha, they call it usually tattoos, they call them mochas, not tattoos. So the design on the faces represent the mochas and the word spells peace. And you got the young gangs that got the colors of the, of the crips, the red and the blood, red and the blue, so that's why the flower was like that. Now this image is in front of the main library at one of the malls over in 
Auckland, New Zealand. Next, please. This is Tommy E.T., who I, when I first went there, he's from Tuhoi. He uh, greeted me uh, along with other, other uh, Maori, and a lot of people didn't know there were Polynesian Panthers who were official chapter of the Black Panther Party in 1971 in New Zealand. There were Australian Panthers also. All oh, this is a part of the film, I think it might be in the film, I'm not sure, in the vanguard of the revolution. But you also had Palestine, you had in Palestine, in Israel, you had Palestinians. You had the Dialect Panthers who were inspired in India, who called themselves the Dialect Panthers. All this is documented. Next, please. This is called Endangered Species. These youngsters, they, they don't care. Let them kill each other. They don't want to come out when a major protest come up and they say they're going to do something, but they don't care. They want to say, let them kill each other. Next. The youngsters don't know what they're getting themselves into when they get into prison. They get into modern day slavery. Next, prison industrial complex. It's about money, private property. This is again another one. What I use this one too. At one time, I had a badge of Free Eddie Conway on there at one point when I reinterpreted it a while back. Next, Justice Now. I've got about five, five or less, five more minutes or less, and, I, I got, but, and I'll be finished. Uh, justice now, free political prisoners now. Next, free the Angola three, targeted, framed, and isolated over 36 years in solitary confinement. That was in 2005, as that story goes. One of them died right after a couple of days after getting out of prison. Robert King, another panther who was in there. Had been out over 10 years, then the last brother got out, and they're still doing human rights work. Next, please. Mamiya Abu Jamal, freedom. Next. Free political prisoners, freedom fighters, USA, fighters for peace, justice, freedom, particularly the struggles against recognized, cruel, and oppressive conditions, government. Inhuman, inhumane policies and actions. Next, this is the uh, one that says, all power to the people, and it says, educate to liberate. Next, and last of all, all power to the people, and thank you very much. Um, so thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, at this time, uh, we would open the floor to questions, if anybody has any. Who was there over here? Somebody over here. I don't okay. know how y'all got Oh, oh yeah. Um, hi, my name is Autumn Dalton. I'm a senior journalism major and graphic design minor from Howard. Um, Actually, I'm from Michigan, too. And um, I'm the managing editor of our school newspaper. So I do the layout, and I also control the content that goes into that. And this school year, we're trying to bring back the revolutionary aspect that Howard had with like Kwame Ture, and he, you know, he's a popular alum. And basically, we brought something back called Campus Speak Out. The icon that I made for is a black fist, and it's when we go around the campus and we we ask the um, the students what they think about you know issues that are involving the campus. So basically, I just wanted to ask you, like, where did you get your inspiration from when you were trying to be very revolutionary? I mean, for us, we kind of have the big brother looking at us. Like, the school does kind of try to control what we put in the paper, but we have something big coming out this week that's a bit different. So I just wanted to know where did you draw your inspiration from? The, inf the inspiration has come from the community itself, uh, listening and understanding the very basic understanding of what it is that they're demanding, hearing the frustrations, hearing the pain and love that's reflected in what they do and how they go about it, is how you begin, how I myself begin to reflect in some of the artwork 
uh, that interpretation of those feelings and expressions. So it's not divorced from that uh, because the people themselves let you know how they appreciate it. Then you know that you're doing something that's maybe bigger than yourself. And it's not a me art, it becomes a we art because it's a reflection of the social concerns and stuff that exists at, at any given time during that period. And you're interpreting that. And so that's it. But growing up, you could say as a kid, uh, watching and as a youngster reflecting back on the streets, young older guys who used to stand in front of the store would be stopped and searched and profiled simply because, and they had to, and if they had no, no money in their pocket, they charge them with vagrancy. Every week they knew who they were, but they would come by and harass them anyway. And if they didn't have no, happen to have no ID on them that day or no money in their pocket, and they stopped and they caught them, they, they, put, they go to jail for two, two or three weeks. You had that. Uh, growing up at the time when the, uh, the Civil Rights Acts were taking place in the Bay Area in San Francisco, growing up in San Francisco, uh, where blacks couldn't, uh, entertainers couldn't even stay downtown. They had to stay in the hood because they couldn't. So you've seen them all walking the streets in the, in, in the district where you lived at, all those kinds of things, observing on the TV what was going on with the Civil Rights Movement in the early 50s and 60s late 50s and 60s, and seeing the same thing happening in South Africa when you turn on the national news, the, the hoses, the dogs, all that same thing. And just, just so happened, I remember as a youngster, and it didn't come to me to lay down who they were. I used to see these two black men, every time they would come to town, the news would gravitate to them. And it was, in, it was I was, wow. And I come to find out that was W.E. Du Bois and, and uh, Paul Robeson. Yeah, it, and, and I, but I didn't realize that as a youngster until later on. But I would be intrigued because they always wanted to talk to me. And, and then when I seen have to turn on the TV, when we had three channels, and they showed the Democratic Convention where Fannie Lou Heyman and went, and I was, and because they were black, I'm rooting for them at, to be seated, and they refused to seat the delegation then uh, you go back to the next time around, you see where they do seek the delegation. The next four years they come back, they had, you know, there was some pressure put on from that. And, 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 and just uh, those are, and going south with my auntie, and when we get in the bus station in Oklahoma City, she hold my hand and say, son, we gotta go sit back here, a little, little closet-like for the cafeteria. Don't use that bathroom out here, you gotta use this one here, colored only. So you, those things kind of, I guess, subliminally in relationships, and then you see the rebellions and the resistance that was taking place that they don't show a whole lot of now on TV, all that impacts you. Then you become in, 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 in connected with people who had many years in, of, of, of resistance and struggle and enlightening, and being around folks like that, that inspires you as well, you know? and wanting to do something. Then you say on yourself wanting to do something, and when you see, find out about organizations that you want to contribute to, then you make that contribution, and you're given the green light, then the comrades in the party appreciate the work. The people in the, commu in the uh, community appreciate the work, because some of them tell you, well, this look like my auntie in this, this look like my uncle. Now you're making them heroes in the artwork. Whether you are meant to do that or not, you've just been inspired by that. Then you know it's something that's beyond just yourself. It's a broader connection to the artwork than just yourself that's being ins that's inspired by it in many ways. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, very much, sir, for your work. Yes. Thank you for your inspiration and for the example you've left behind for us or that you're leaving for us. Uh, I have a question uh, just in general, so I, I've written it down just to make sure I capture it correctly. <laughs> Recently, there seems to be a societal belief that white supremacy has all of a sudden arisen because of Donald Trump's election. However, history indicates that global white supremacy and terrorism has been in place for millennia. This is evidenced by the fact that white people are believed to be less than 10% of the global population, but yet they dominate or are supreme on this planet. This is also evidenced by the abusive history of white people on this planet, especially from colonial, colonialism through the present day. And so here's my question. Do you have an opinion about what people who are not 
classified as white should do to eradicate the problem of white terrorism and supremacy? Well, you have to inform, enlighten, educate, and uh, that's for sure. Now, the context of how that goes about, I guess they could vary from geographical perspectives, and you have to continue to, uh, in, you have to inform, you have to educate. And out of that will come a, uh, a, a repressive situations, but resistance at the same time. But uh, that's the only way that I could answer that question. I mean, with Donald Trump, what he did, he just undressed the language. <laughs> you know, he raw, that, that, that's what they don't like. He undressed the language, you know. It's not that, it, it's something that they, many of them, and, and you know, you're talking about institutional racism. You know, you're talking about a culture that's, that you have a, a, a privileged class has gone along to accept. And you have to, under, you have to inform, enlighten, and educate. That's what the Black Panther Party was about. It was inform, enlightening, and educating. So you have time for a uh, few more questions. Um. See, we, 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 uh, we always said we didn't hate people because of the color of their skin. What we hated was the inferior education. What we hated was the indecent housing. What we hated was the billy club being up, 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 up on our heads. You see, all those are things that we hate. But we didn't hate people. We didn't stoop to the level of the racist to hate people because of the color of their skin. OK, quick question. Uh, not, I don't know if it's quick or not. But can you talk about your process? Um, sketches, approval, when you were creating, when you were creating the covers? Oh, well, that was, um, like it how was, many layers it wasn't of informal. You this, you, 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 I know what you're talking about a formal way that integrates into the way I do stuff, the way things were done, but uh, I, you develop your own way of doing it through the critiquing and the evaluation that goes on in the collective. Uh, uh, because there were other artists who work, came to work with me who had better skills than I, but it was my, well, my responsibility to teach them how to integrate the social context into the artwork. So, uh, but, but through evaluating, looking at your work, critiquing it, you develop different ways of how you can approach it, you know. But it was also, you know, I look at a lot of different publications, black publications from the magazines, and uh, to get and read, read a lot of the stuff, but then you have to know to create the work, you have to have a basic understanding of what's going on. Um, you can go so far off emotions, but after that, but then when you have to be able to back it up, when you're challenged on whatever it is that you're saying, you have to be able to get, define it. That's the other word, enlighten, inform, and educate. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, so, but the process was, sometimes I just, I do, I, I'll maybe I, I do a sketch and transfer it. Uh, and then ink it. Most of the drawings I did during the Panthers were uh, the wash, pen, and ink, then used the prefabricated textures to overlap on the images, those kind of things. Yeah. And yeah. Except when I did, every now and then I did a painting or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, one more question. Free the lamb, Baba. Yes. Um, it's it's a high honor and a joy to be in a room with somebody responsible for, you know, maybe the most powerful images of the last century. I had the privilege of working with Baba um, Imari Obadeli in the late 80s as his Minister of Information, working with that rub on text and the blue line stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, your work was an inspiration. You know, we were only putting out our, our new African newspaper um, like once every quarter. And I just can't, I, I'm just amazed at how prolific you were. I mean, that's activity, man. That's living life. And your appropriation of the new African saying, free the land, to the Palestinian stroller, I think is brilliant. And I, I, I applaud that. And just, um, you know, I really wish that the Black Lives Matter movement was as internationalist as you are and as deeply informed as you are. Thank you. So with that, we're going to have to uh, end, the, end the presentation. However, uh, please, please feel free to stick around and um, talk to Mr. Douglas. <laughs>